Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure uh, to uh, be here and to be able to talk about vaccines with Dr. Ruth Karen. Ruth is the director of the Johns Hopkins Vaccine Initiative and the Center for Immunization Research at the Bloomberg School of Public Health. So what purpose does a vaccine serve? What, it, what does it do? The expectation is that it would prevent severe disease, hospitalization, and death. And the second thing it would do is, even if it didn't absolutely prevent infection, it would limit viral replication. And by limiting that replication, it would limit the possibility that someone that wants someone who's infected might transmit the, the virus to their neighbor or their friend. How many people are trying to make vaccines and, and why so many and how are they so different? I can tell you that right now there are more than 90 vaccines in development. And many of these are through public-private partnerships, through partnerships between small biotech and big pharma um, and multilateral organizations. And it's really because everybody understands this is a global effort, but it's also going to be a big effort in terms of supply because we have to be able to supply billions of doses of vaccine. Let's go back to the different types of vaccines. I heard there are RNA vaccines, there are DNA vaccines, uh, they have them in adenoviruses and RSV viruses and attenuated. Tell me, why so many different approaches? Do you have, are you going to bet on one approach versus the other? T tell us, Ruth, give us insight here. I'm not going to bet on one approach. I think it's really important to have a wide variety of approaches. And I will say one of the interesting and exciting things about this time, if we can think frame it that way, is that we're trying some new technologies. We're using this technologies that have been established for licensed vaccines, but we're also using some new technologies. And I think it's important to have all of these various technologies for a couple of reasons. One is we don't absolutely know what's going to work, and it's important to have a number of these shots on goal to find vaccines that will ultimately work. And the other thing is really that there are different populations that we need to protect. We need to protect young, healthy adults. We need to protect the elderly. So it may be that there are different vaccines that will work best for different populations. So let's go back. So you have a vaccine and it works in some sm small clinical trials. And what are the challenges after you have the vaccine in terms of, as you said, allowing it to really change the course of this disease? What, what, what are the next challenges after you have a vaccine that works? Well, some of them are related to manufacture. And it's not just making the vaccine, but having something to put it in and some, having something to give it with. So having all the vials we need, having all the syringes we need, that's, that's going to be an issue. One of the lucky things I think at this point is that some of the vaccine companies are making vaccines at risk. So usually what happens in the normal course of events with vaccine development, a company will take a vaccine through clinical trials and then if it works, they'll start manufacture. But then that's a delay after we know it works. Right now, um, these companies are making vaccines so that we will have some available. The other challenge, as I mentioned, is really developing a global supply. And how do you do that? What will countries allow in terms of export of vaccine to other countries? I think that remains to be seen. And how will we protect the world? Because it's going to be really important not just to think about our own country and our own borders, but to think about global protection. Well, Ruth, that's been really helpful. I learned a lot this morning. So thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, thank you so much for having me.